Hello everybody, a random gnome here, and it's the end of the year, and you know what that means? Game of the year list. Obviously I have not played every game released this year, so if you don't see your game on the list, please don't be offended. And yeah, these are my personal picks, and it's all opinion. So yeah, let's get started. Coming in at number 5 is Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U. At first glance, I wasn't excited for this game when they first showed off the first segment of gameplay. I thought, you know, I really enjoyed Super Mario 3D Land, but I'm not sure if I want the same game, you know, on Wii U. But I was really pleasantly surprised with the quality of this game. The graphics are really clean and crisp and colorful in a world of games that, you know, seem to be dark and gloomy or full of bloom. And it runs at a steady 60 FPS so it's really outperforming the Xbox One and PS4 in performance. Maybe not in the way the game looks, but the way it performs, this game is top-notch and can't be beat. It really has that Nintendo charm and there's secrets everywhere. Everywhere you look and you try to, you know, go to an area where you don't think you're supposed to be going, you'll be surprised to see that Nintendo has placed secrets in just about every area in the game. And it's really a great time just to look around and try to collect everything in the world. I did that in Super Mario 3D Land, and it was one of the best experiences I've had on a handheld in a while. I haven't gone so far to play the Secret World yet, so this game actually could have been higher on the list. The music in this game is incredible, the orchestration is great, so yeah, I would not try to pass this off as a, you know, a rehash. I would recommend you guys check this game out. Coming in at number 4 is Nino Kuni by Level 5 Games. The cutscenes are actually animated by Studio Ghibli or Ghibli, however that company is pronounced. But anyways, this game, I remember seeing trailers for this game and seeing the amazing cell shaded graphics and the beautiful world around it. I knew it was released earlier for the 3DS in Japan, but I was really waiting for this American release and I was not disappointed. And the world is complemented by its amazing score. Every area you go, there is a new, you know, sound of the game that really changes with the environment. It's it's pretty impressive. The story is really heartfelt and, you know, you really feel for the characters and the voice acting is pretty good for an English voiceover for a Japanese game. I was pretty impressed by that. And yeah, the world is pretty expansive. The combat is really fun. It's uh, Pokemon style, you know, you collect and level up familiars. And the combat's kind of like Kingdom Hearts cross Pokemon. And the game is rather lengthy as well. You can put an easy 40 hours to this game and not even notice because the story is so fun and there's side quests and the world is just a joy to explore. Coming in at number 3 is Grand Theft Auto 5. This game really brought what I liked in the Grand Theft Auto series, which is fun. Grand Theft Auto 4 kind of took the series in a darker, more serious turn. This game retains an amazing story while keeping the fun aspect. The dynamic of having three characters really changes the way the game is played. You can be robbing a bank on one character and be in a window across the street sniping guards that come into the room to keep the other characters safe. Steven Augitz, Trevor Phillips in this game might be one of the best performances in any video game I've seen. It's very enjoyable to see this character do the sadistic and brutal things that this character will do to get what he wants. I'm including this game with the multiplayer as one complete package, so it kind of brings down the title, and that's why it's at the number 3 spot. But overall, it's an amazing game. The story story kept me in and I beat this game within three days which is kind of overboard. I really want to see what Rockstar will do to top this one. Here, darling, why don't you go get yourself something nice, okay? Thank you! <laughs> is, is it seven dollars? I said something nice, not expensive. You want to be a greedy fucking cow, huh? No. Coming in at number 2 is Bioshock Infinite. This was one of my most anticipated games of 2013, and it didn't disappoint. What really makes this game shine is the exploration. Going into an implied paradise, and finding out that everything isn't what it seems. The art design is amazing, and it's complemented by the game's soundtrack, which is beautiful and sometimes eerie. One of the things that make this game really work is Elizabeth. She is a companion, but she stays out of the way and helps you when you need it. The only thing holding this game down is the gunplay. Although it is fun, it can get really repetitive really Really quick. Otherwise, it would probably make the number one spot. The story in this game is amazing, and the ending to this game is already legendary. It may not hold a candle to the original Bioshock, but it is one of the better games to come out this year. I have finished the first episode of Burial at Sea, and I can't wait for the second one. I can't wait to see where Bioshock goes from here.
Coming in at number one, I'm sure it's not a surprise, The Last of Us. This is Naughty Dog's latest masterpiece. This game takes place in a post-apocalyptic United States. In a world where the government takes no chances with the infected, no matter if it would be their loved one or your loved one, they will kill without mercy. Naughty Dog really takes the full potential in their experience of what they have done with the PS3 before and really makes an amazing looking game. This is probably the best looking game on last gen hardware. Most games glorify violence, but the violence in this game is so visceral that you almost want to avoid it. The depiction of emotion in the dialogue in this game is really amazing. You can really see what a character is feeling or thinking just by the subtle nuances in the animation. Not only are the characters in the world amazing, the gameplay is one of the best I've seen in a AAA title in a long time. Realistic kickbacks of weapons combined with the limited supplies of ammo and weapons really makes this game tense. It's a great example how a shooter can use critical thinking to use the right weapons at the right time and conserve ammo. Not only do you get emotionally connected with the main characters, there are several side characters that you meet that have moments that are really powerful. This game is just a beautiful piece of art, and by the ending, you most likely won't be happy with the ending. But then again, it's not a fairy tale. This game truly deserves a spot for number one, and I can't wait to see what Naughty Dog does on their future endeavors. Hurry up. Go on. Hey there. <laughs> so fucking cool. Well, that's it for my top five games of the year. I would love to see your guys' top five choices for your games of the year in the comments below, or even make a video response. As you can probably tell, this is my first top 5 list, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm obviously not a seasoned veteran as the likes of someone like Adam Sessler, but I thought I'd give it a shot since I n I've never made a list like this before. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on your game of the year. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys later.